Today, I will demonstrate how you can create a RAID 5 array using software utility built into the Windows Server 2019. First, make sure your Windows Server is up to date. Then, go to Start menu, type Computer Management. Open the Computer Management Desktop app and on the left hand pane you will have a option called storage under storage the disk management utility when you click on your disk management utility if your hard drives has been detected and they are online it will show up on the window called initialize disk in this example I make sure intentionally some of my hard drives are not online so I can show you guys how to bring them online. So we will simply close this window and you can see there's four hard drives that I have added to this server. All of them are at 10 gigabyte and only one of them is online. To bring these offline disks to online, on the left hand pane right click and select online and this will bring each of these hard drives to online however none of them are initialized so before we build the, our RAID 5 array the first thing we need to do is to make sure we initialize this thing to initialize what you can do is on the left hand pane right click and select initialize disk however if your drives are already initialized and are online if you go uh, if you close the utility and if you open um, computer management and if you click on disk management it will give you the initialized disk pop up but this time it will show you all the hard drives that are currently online but assuming you did, didn't get that or you accidentally closed it what you can do is right click on here and select initialize disk you will see all the disks that you can be that, that can be initialized under select disk so i'm going to select all four of them and I will pick the GPT option. I will not go into detail about difference between MBR and GPT. Uh, For now, just simply select GPT and click OK. After a few seconds, all of these hard drives will show us online and unallocated. Now, if you right click on the first drive, or which one of the one of your drives that you'll be using for your RAID 5 you can select the option called convert to dynamic desk select that option and I would also select the hard drives that I'll be using for uh, RAID 5 from the convert to dynamic desk window and click OK And notice that these unallocated drives shows up on the disk utility with the black bar and our C drive that contain the uh, Windows opera uh, server operating system is showing in the blue bar up here. So if you have other drives that are already be, uh, been initialized and configured and partitioned, they will show up with blue bars. So now we have converted our new drives into dynamic desk right click on any of these disk and select pre new RAID 5 volume I will explain what are simple span stripe and mirror volume on a different video but for now we're going to select the new RAID 5 volume it will give you the new RAID 5 volume uh, creation wizard click next and select the disk that you will be using for your RAID 5 volume. So I'll be using disk 1 to 4. 
and I'm going to use the maximum space that I can uh, use on each of these drives. Then click next. And I'm going to assign this drive with the drive letter E. But you can select whatever you like. And click next. And I'm going to click, call this RAID 5. And I'm going to select the quick perform a quick format. So it is faster and easier for us. And click next. And it will give you some of options that you selected. And review these options and make sure that's what you want. And click finish. After a few seconds, you will have RAID 5 volume and it will show up as syncing. Once the syncing is done, you will have a RAID 5 built based on the Windows software RAID. And it will show up as healthy as the syncing um, has been completed. Now, if you go to uh, your PC, you see that RAID 5 volume right here. And uh, you can drag and drop items. So I'm just going to um, create, uh, create a document this case. This is a test uh, item. And I'm going to type something. And this file is now saved on that RAID 5 volume. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put a video file in here so that we can play it uh, out of our uh, RAID 5. So this is the video that I have created a uh, few uh, minutes ago. And you can see the video is playing out of the RAID 5. Then the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take one of the hard drives out of this uh, machine. So I'm going to quickly do that uh, here and then I'll get back to you. So I simply uh, go ahead and remove a, one of the hard drives. But as you can see, the video is still playing. But if you go to our computer management disk management options, you can see one of the hard drives have failed. That because of I pulled one of the hard drives out and it's showing us the redundancy, uh, you know, there's a fail in redundancy. But however, my data, this video that I have put it in and also the, our test um, text file is still available to us. This is one of the advantages of RAID 5. So you can have one drive failure, no problem. Even without that uh, drive, you still will be able to access your data and even continue to use the data during that failure with no issues at all. One thing to keep in mind, this particular RAID 5 is a software-based RAID 5. In a production environment, it is typically uh, advised to use hardware-based RAID uh, controllers. So, however, uh, this particular option of having a software RAID on a Windows server is pretty nice if you want to quickly get a RAID 5 going uh, for creating redundancy. And once you add a new hard drive to replace this failed drive, you can rebuild the RAID 5 array and at the same time, keep continuing to use um, data out of the RAID 5. And also, you may be wondering, how could this data be accessed even though a hard drive has been failed? That is because whenever you request data from a failed RAID 5 volume, it will be using whatever the av available uh, data on other drives to create those documents or files that you are requesting out of this RAID array. So while this video is still playing, 
uh, I decided uh, to go ahead and add a new hard drive. Uh, so we may be able to create a new um, rebuild of a RAID 5 array. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, device this while it's playing here. So if I go to disk management uh, utility uh, right here, you will see uh, there is a new unallocated um, drive. You can right click and again initialize to GPT. And next thing we're going to do, we're going to right click on one of the uh, fail uh, redundancy rate 5 volume and select the option called prepare volume. And it will notice that, hey, there is a new hard drive added with the same uh, capacity of uh, 10 gigabyte and it is online. So we're going to select that one and we're going to click OK. And it will give you a warning uh, that it will create the um, recreate the RAID 5. But however, whatever the data or whatever the information in this disk 2 will be deleted. So that's no problem. We're going to say yes. And again, it will show syncing. Now it will sync across this new uh, hard drive and rebuild the RAID on those all four hard drives. So now it will come back as healthy and our video is still playing and none of our data is lost. So that's how software RAID 5 works on Windows Server 2019. Thank you.